Hello viewers, welcome to another episode of Dexter's Lab 2013. I want to keep this one fairly short because there is very likely going to be a part two to this one. Uh, also I shall be getting on with the uh, electron microscope teardowns and indeed I do actually have a cold at the moment. I do sound a bit nasally, uh, my apologies, but we shall just soldier on. So I picked this up the other day, uh, it cost me 50 quid including the rather large flight case that came with it. This is a Red Lake Imaging motion scope. It is a high speed video camera. Uh, I've always been interested in high speed video. I've long since wanted to have my own decent high speed video camera. Unfortunately, this isn't the one because it's not fast enough. More of that in a moment. But this should be uh, fun to have a bit of a play around with. So in with all the bits that I uh, picked up, we have the camera head. Uh, we've got a couple of lenses, uh, zoom lens and a, a prime. Uh, the cable that connects the camera head to the actual recorder and of course the actual recorder itself. Now if you're subscribed to my channel you're very likely subscribed to Tesla 500's channel as well and you might have seen him do a teardown or repair of one very similar to this uh, some time ago. If you haven't there'll be a link in the video description or a, one of those card things that appears up over there somewhere. So there does seem to be a fair few of these around but there's not really that much information out there on the internet about them unfortunately so it's quite hard to distinguish what model is what and what the specifications are and um, any kind of service information either. I can really only go off what I've managed to find out for myself. So the two lenses that came with this we have a uh, six millimeter uh, fixed prime and this one is a zoom lens and that's between uh, 12.5 and 75 millimeters so uh, and the actual camera head uh, is this, uh, which has got the mount on the front, connection to the recorder on the back, and we have uh, a number on the back, 2482-05. Uh, I'm not sure whether that is a model number or a serial number, because that is indicated on the bottom of this as a serial number. So I'm not sure what model that is, but um, it is. You might notice there that there's red, green, and blue lines on there, and indeed this is a colour camera. And the main recorder is just an um, aluminium chassis with a tilting bale. We've got the connections or the output connections um, on the side here. On the front we've got the user controls, connection to the actual camera, a couple of option switches and the power input. So with this uh, connected up, uh, it certainly powers on. Um, everything does appear to work. You can see there we've got uh, an image of some description. And now I've just altered my colour balance uh, on my camera um, to sort of more accurately ref reflect the colours that I'm actually seeing on the screen here. So uh, you can see there it all is pretty muted. Um, it seems to be that uh, the longer you have this switched on, um, the colours tend to change over time. And um, there is uh, in the menu some options to change the colour balance, but you set it one time and then you turn it off, back on again, and you need to change them again. So. There's obviously something not quite right with this. So I'll just quickly run through these uh, simple menus. Uh, we've got the playback and record uh, section up here and then the setup here. Uh, so we've got the frame count, um, the time of frame um, and the event number. Uh, here we have the actual speed. So if I select uh, the frames per second, so we've got 60, 125, 250 and 500. Um, that does appear to be the maximum. There is also these 60E, 125E, 250E, and then another 500 again. So this does all appear to work. If I uh, actually record something, do that and then stop, I can then play back. Uh, honestly, there we go. So uh, step through. What I just did, I uh, can actually change this so it plays back. That's at 10 frames per second. Um, obviously, this was only recorded at 60 frames per second, so um, there's, it doesn't look that much different from normal real reality. If I stop that and change the change it to 125, it'll probably get too dark to actually be able to see on the screen. We can then play that back. 
slow it down. So as I said, the, this does seem to have some issues. Uh, the colour being notably one of them. Um, the colour balance is just completely to pot. Or, um, I, I doubt it was ever this bad from the factory. Uh, so that needs to be looked at. Um, the other issue as well, if I actually get this, so you can actually see a better, better picture. If I um, change this to 250 frames a second, you see the frame is still pretty much okay. But then when I go up to 500, um, I get this really weird sort of ghosting effect. And that also happens on the the E prefixed ones as well. So you can see there's a there's like a tear just here, and then it seems to the picture seems to loop back on itself. Um, really, really odd. Okay, uh, let's give you a look inside. So the lid on this is just held on with six slotted screws. All very simple to open. This seems to be a much newer unit than the ones I've seen before. Uh, this does seem to date from about 1998. And yes, that does look very much like a PCI card in there. And indeed it is. Um, it seems what uh, Red Lake did was to create this PCI um, interface card, which could be used dual purpose. You could actually either plug it into a PC uh, to allow connections to high-speed cameras directly on a PC, or it could be run standalone in a box like this with uh, its own um, user interface, screen and everything built onto it. So if we just take a closer look at this PCI card, uh, we've got the connection to the camera at the front here. We've got um, a set of dip switches there. They don't really seem to do anything particularly important. Um, change the video output from NTSC to PAL, that kind of thing. Um, we have a Philips uh, device here. This is a video um, encoder chip. This takes the digital video probably from these uh, FPGAs and turns it into composite to be output to the LCD screen that's on the front here and to the output ports at the back just over this this cable. Uh, just above the PCI connector we can see uh, there's a missing device there. I suspect this is really the big difference between this card being used as a PCI um, card and whether it, when it's installed into a machine like this and run standalone because I suspect there would be a, a PCI controller chip uh, that would normally be mounted on there. Uh, we've got a little bit of memory here uh, and then the main storage memory is uh, just here on the 72 pin sims. Uh, we have two of those installed at the moment. Um, each one of those is 16 meg. They're EDO so it gives us a total of 32 megabytes and according to the menus that gives us 511 frames. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, Altera Flex FPGAs here, um, obviously doing all that bit twiddling um, to get the data out of the camera and record it into the RAM. Just a little bit further back we have a, a program device with EC500 written on it. Um, that could well be the model number of this actual camera. Now I don't know whether this board is configured for every single different type of uh, camera um, as it's shipped from the factory or whether the card is completely generic and through jumper settings and things like that you can actually tell it what camera is attached. I actually kind of suspect that each one of these has a different um, ROM in here to uh, drive the camera that is actually supplied with it. And there's a small Motorola based uh, microcontroller at the back there uh, that probably does things like the menus on the user panel. And right at the back there, just under under there, you can't quite see, there's obviously some, some power supply stuff. Uh, right on the back of the unit, uh, we just got a POG standard chassis uh, power supply, which just gives us 5 and 12 volts, it looks like. And looking forward at the LCD panel, we have a cable running over from the uh, main board. There's a device up here, that's a Philips SAA7 treble 1. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but uh, I suspect that's probably an LCD driver. 
Uh, we've got a flat flex running over to the panel. Uh, high voltage sticker on the back there, so this is quite clearly using a CCFT backlight, which would be um, absolutely typical for the time. And on the bottom of the unit, we have uh, some details. Uh, we've got mod, presumably that means model, which is 1103 0001, uh, universal input voltage, obviously. Um, serial number 2482 09, as I said before. That seems to match what's on the camera. Um, obviously, the 09 might refer to this uh, this this part, and the 05 is the camera head. And then underneath there, we have um, what looks to be more like a model number to me, which is HR 500C um, W and ERO. Uh, no idea what the W and ERO means, but uh, 500. Well, it's certainly a 500 frames per second camera, and C might denote colour. So, but if anybody knows what ERO means, um, please enlighten us. Now we can also take a look at the actual head itself as well. And then we can see the image sensor. Uh, and obviously, that's a greeny blue colour uh, because of the infrared cut filter. Now, when I originally picked this up, um, this filter was completely fogged over. Uh, I had to uh, give it a good old polish up to uh, make it clear again. So the actual head itself is made from uh, pieces of machined aluminium. These aluminium covers on the side. So inside the camera we've got uh, two PCBs, one mounted vertically and one on the base. Uh, looks like there's a load of power supply stuff going on there and some bits and bobs in there I'm not really going to profess to know much about. And if we remove the two screws here and on the other side we can actually split this into two. So we've got the connections at the back going over to the cable and these come from the actual camera head. Yeah. A few very large caps on there. I might be inclined to check and replace those possibly, uh, given this is made from 1998 and this uh, head does actually get fairly warm, so um, there could well be a capacitor issue. So, just uh, looking up some of these part numbers, uh, we've got this here, which is a DS90C032, and that's an LVDS line driver. Um, this is exactly the same part, but it's 3.1 at the end, and that's a line driver as well. Uh, this device is a fixed delay line, and then just above that we've got a 32 megahertz uh, oscillator. Uh, we've also got a number of uh, jumpers here for different options. No idea what those do, and there's a couple of inductors there as well. Uh, if we have a look at the other part, uh, you can just see the CCD in there. I believe that uh, is a Texas Instruments... TC236, uh, which is a 340,000 pixel sensor and runs up to 25 megahertz. On the back of that, uh, we've probably got a couple of drivers there underneath this bit of copper, uh, which just probably acts as a bit of heat sinking, um, given there's a load of um, heat sink compound there. And there's a few pots and stuff on here. I wonder whether those need twiddling with to fix that odd effect when I go into the 500 frames per second mode. Now just talking about that fault, um, I have the user guide for the Red Lake PCI um, system which is what this is clearly based on and there is some uh, a section in it uh, called video channel imbalance and it details the video image is taken from two analog video channels from the imager in the camera. If these two channels are not balanced, you will see a picture with horizontal lines as shown as figure 6.2. Uh, so, yeah, basically not user fixable, but uh, I'm sure it must be. Um, if anybody knows if the fault that I'm seeing is that um, imbalance, then please let me know. And if you've got any clues on how to actually resolve it, that would also help as well. Okay, I think I'll wrap this video up about here. Uh, there's not much more to see or... Uh, run through now. Um, if anybody has any ideas on where to start in terms of trying to figure out what's causing that fault on the 500 frames per second mode and the weird colour uh, that I'm seeing, the 
cull and balance is just all over the all over the place then please let me know i will continue um, tinkering and researching i'll probably start uh, uh, pulling some bits off this checking the capacitors maybe replacing those do some do some really easy due diligence stuff and hopefully we can uh, fix it up and get it working as it should be oh one other thing before i go uh, the pci card on here it's stuffed full of uh, pin headers they're all over the place so if anybody has any details on what all the pin headers do um, there's a number of jumpers and stuff all over the place so uh, but there's no details of it in any of the documentation that I have so if anybody knows uh, what the jumpers do and the pin headers then please let me know okay thanks for watching everybody I'll uh, see you on the next one bye for now